Protein uncovered. Protein is one of three main macronutrients or macros that make up your diet, the others being carbohydrates and fats. Proteins are made of amino acids, which are acquired almost everywhere in your body. If you don't eat enough of these, your body will start to break down muscle in your body to create its own amino acid source. If you eat no or almost no protein, this can lead to serious illness. There's lots of different types of amino acids. Meat and animal products contain a good balance of them all. So if you get all your protein from meat, dairy or eggs, you're all set. It used to be thought that vegetarians needed to mix their protein sources to obtain the right balance of amino acids. But we now know that if you are a vegetarian and you have a moderately balanced diet, you'll be fine. The only exception to this rule is if your diet relies heavily on fruit, tubers like potatoes, or junk food, flour, sugar, fat. If this describes your diet, I would strongly recommend that you change it, and you change it for a diet that's something balanced and a lot more healthier foods. So how much protein should you eat? Your body functions well with a range of protein. Most people get around 15% of their calories from protein, but consuming 40% or even 50% of calories from protein has no negative consequences, and in fact promotes muscle gain and maintenance. The more active you are, the more protein you need. More protein leads to better results for athletes. High protein intake has no proven negative health consequences. There is no apparent difference between protein sources. It doesn't matter whether you get it from meat, dairy, eggs, vegetables, beans or pulses, all protein is fairly similar. Current guidelines for recommended daily intake of protein are considered to be a minimum intake. In the UK, they work out to be about 10% of calories from protein. Exceeding these guidelines, even by four or five times, is fine. High protein diets have been proven to be more effective for weight loss. A massive study published in the American Journal of Medical Nutrition showed that high protein diets result in an extra kilogram of weight loss over a 12-week diet compared to normal protein level diets. What about the stories about protein being bad for my health? Some studies have shown a relationship between high protein diets and heart disease. However, there is no evidence that it's the protein which is causing the heart disease. If you eat a lot of fatty or processed meats, however, you should consider swapping it for lean, unprocessed meats instead. A massive study of over one million people showed no relationship between eating red meat and heart disease or diabetes, but eating processed meats did increase the risk of heart disease and diabetes. If you have kidney or liver damage, your doctor will tell you to cut down on your protein. That's because protein causes your kidneys and liver to work harder to process your food. And if you've damaged kidneys or liver already, then this is a bad idea. But if your kidneys and liver work fine, there's nothing to worry about. There is no clear evidence that eating lots of protein causes kidney or liver damage. It is true that your body can lose some calcium due to high protein consumption, but there is no evidence that osteoporosis or bone damage can be caused by this. There's plenty of calcium in dairy products, seafood, fruit, legumes and leafy greens. If your diet contains none of these things, you should change your diet, as a lack of all of these foods is likely to have other, more serious health ramifications. In fact, bones are made of protein. Evidence has shown that a high protein diet can decrease the risk of getting osteoporosis, especially among those more at risk, like the elderly. Also, resistance training combined with protein consumption strengthens bones over time. There is a link between high protein intake and cancer. However, is an, however, there is no evidence that it was a large amount of protein in the diet that caused the cancer. There has been a link shown between processed meat and bowel cancer. Examples include meats such as deli meats, sausages, bacon and salami. I would recommend limiting your intake of these meats anyway, as they are often high in fat and additives. When should you eat protein and how often? There is a common belief that after a workout, you have about 20 to 30 minutes to consume lots of protein to promote muscle growth. We know this isn't true. A study of over 500 people published in the Journal of the International Society of Sports and Nutrition showed that timing doesn't matter too much. All that matters is the total amount of protein consumed. Another study compared eating protein before exercise or after and also found no difference. What are the best sources of protein? As I've already discussed, unprocessed meats are a great source of protein. All meat is high in protein, but my favourite sources are fish and white meats, 
such as turkey. Milk and other dairy products also contain protein. If you're looking for a high protein, low carb, low fat dairy product, try skier or fat free yogurt. Whey protein powder is also dairy based. Egg whites are high in protein, containing about 50 calories of protein per egg. However, egg yolks contain about 100 calories of fat. So if you want to boost your protein intake without increasing calorie intake too much, you can separate your eggs. I don't often do it personally, but it can be done. Bean and bean based products are high in protein. So are pulses, nuts and seeds. Green vegetables also contain protein, though not very much. Soy is a bean which contains quite a high amount of protein. There are lots of foods made from soy, edamame beans, tofu, misu, tempeh, soy milk, to name a few. However, it has a bit of a bad reputation. This is because soy contains oestrogen-like compounds. Looking at papers that have been published on the subject, though, it's clear that there is no proven negative consequences. On the flip side, soy has many health benefits. Soy is a complete protein, meaning it contains all the essential amino acids required by the body. Soy has also been shown to reduce the chance of cardiovascular disease and may reduce the chance of developing some forms of cancer. I therefore don't mind the recommendation to use soy in soy-derived products, especially for vegetarians. So in conclusion, everyone needs to eat protein as part of their diet. Try to get at least 10% of your calories from protein but I would recommend much more than this, especially if you're active, trying to lose weight, or trying to gain or at least not lose muscle. Anything up to 40% or even 50% of calories and protein is fine, especially if you're active. Eating lots of high protein feed can help you improve your body composition, as well as make you feel fuller after meals. There are lots of sources of protein, even for vegans, but try to stay away from heavily processed foods. I hope you found this video on protein useful and if you have any questions at all about protein or anything nutrition related, feel free to send them over.